this is, um, I believe this is the last one. These are peacock feathers. And again, some, one of the things I love collecting are different feathers with the colors and um, all the you know, textures that they have. So these are. I like the way you set the background off. That's really nice color Thank combinations. You. Yeah, it's, it's, you have to try and complement the colors of the subject with what colors you paint the background so they go well together. So Beautiful. And so the next one is a different style, right? Yes, this is um, from my hand-weaved photographs. These are new. This is a new series I'm working on, so I'm really kind of exploring with this piece. And these are pieces that I took. I just went out side of my studio door in, in Costa Rica and I took the pictures and photographed them actually right on the cement floor in the studio. So and see the next one, I think there's one more of these. Yes, these are beautiful um, kind of pink leaves that I found um, on a tree and it looked like um, they almost look like little fish or little, you know, you can interpret them many different ways. So um, and I again, woven the photographs, so I cut it horizontally and vertically and just with my hands, just one um, piece under the other, so. So that's great. Wow. Yeah, so there's another one after this, too. Oh, yes, this one, um, I, I believe it's Helconia is the name, and these just look, grow naturally around uh, Costa Rica, so it was just, I had an abundance of subjects to choose from. It was really uh, wonderful to have all the inspiration and again that's the background is not anything that I did it's just the floor of the studio and I used a um, vignette kind of filter on the camera to kind of give it an older um, look with the vignetting kind of almost like a um, pinhole effect. So that's part of the camera settings? Yes. In the menu? Yep. So yep. not Photoshop afterwards? No. Nope. No. Nope. Everything's done ahead of time? Yeah, everything's done in camera or by hand, like with painting or other materials. Yeah. So beautiful. Yes, yeah, those are you. beautiful images. And so this, the paintings that you, or the photographs that you brought into the studio as well, these are the woven, yes. the woven photographs. And it's a little hard to tell from far away, but it's really interesting when you get close up. Um, this one here, this kind of pink bud, um, I just wanted to capture like the delicateness of these plants. And so, and it's really kind of fun because I have these huge 16 by 20 photographs and I have to be very careful to slice each piece evenly. So I have, right. you know, my X-Acto knife and my straight edge and I'm making sure each piece is even. Um, it's vertically and horizontally, and then I have a, my big work table, and I just kind of one at a time. So it's kind of a meditative process because it could take a while to do and just get them all even and each of the pieces um, woven together tightly so they don't fall apart. So how did you come up with this idea? I have no, I have no idea. I think I'm just uh, I'm always exploring different things to do with photographs. Um, so um, I'm in I'm very interested in paper techniques and paper making so I was kind of playing around with strips of paper and seeing what I could do and then I thought well why can't I do this with the photograph too so I just kind of experimented I I get ideas from everywhere but I don't know they just kind of pop into my head you know well I like the the kind of theme so it's sort of like a woven tapestry you sort of meld ancient or older techniques with modern yeah. technology and exactly and I think um, what you said I it's like a tapestry, and I really like that. It's, um, I love fiber art and those kind of things, and I like it when the photographs can look like other things, right. like paintings or like tapestries, so people have to kind of look at it twice to see, if, is that a photograph or is that a painting? I, I really like that. Yeah, so they're beautiful. Thank you. And tell us about your travels in Costa Rica. Yes, well, I'd I was... I'd love to hear some stories. I was very fortunate to um, have um, an artist residency at the Julie and David White Artist Colony in Costa Rica. And I was there for the whole month of December. And it's a place where artists go and you just have time to work. You don't, you're not obligated to do anything else but create. And um, it was in a beautiful setting, just about an hour outside of the capital in a kind of secondary rainforest. And there was four or five other artists there. And, you know, I'd just get up and take a walk around the property, pick, you know, so there was fruit everywhere, pick bananas and oranges, and come yes. back and, and make art all day. You know, if I wanted, I could take a nap or not. But it just had, there was no televisions, no phone, no outside interruptions. Wow. So I really got to kind of 
relax and and put everything in perspective and it was such a it was such an amazing experience I've never got to do anything like that before and I really valued it and I'm, I'm very blessed to be able to have that time um, yeah. to do something like that so at the residency then they had cooked for you as well things like that or did you have to take care of yourself I had to take care of myself which actually was part of the process it yeah. was uh, I had a studio uh, in a studio apartment with a little kitchen and um, we had laundry facilities so we were pretty much left alone they had the owner of the property who'd come and check on us to see if we need anything but I'd go down to the grocery store and get my groceries and um, so walk really them back and interacting with the culture oh there and most the definitely yes so what did you focus on when you were there what types of photography and what inspired you well when I went I packed everything I, I had four suitcases because I didn't know what I was gonna feel like doing yeah. so I really I probably overpacked so but when I got there just the landscape and you know it was 72 to 78 degrees the whole time and just the winds and the landscape that was what really ended up inspiring me and just being able to go pick the plants that I wanted to pick and um, just be in my little studio space and, and um, connect with nature. So so you'd go on hikes and you'd pick flowers or some sort of plant material? Yes, I had like my whole kit. I'd have like a bag and scissors and a few other things. So whenever I'd go outside, I'd have, you know, stuff my pockets in the bag with anything I could find, like huge seed pods or interesting um, leaves and things like that. So I'd have a whole arsenal and I'd come back and unload it all in the studio and kind of pick which pieces I wanted to concentrate on. Excellent. And then you said you used the floor of your studio. Yes. So tell us about that. Why the floor? Because the floor it was these beautiful polished concrete floors. It was Everything was, I don't want to say primitive, but it was very simple. It was very right. simple accommodations, which was perfect, but they had um, cement floors and they just had these great textures and colors and I thought wow this is such a great background rather than the simple like doing a white background or something like that so I'd go into different places in the bathroom or the kitchen and find different sections of the floor that I really liked and I'd try and say oh well this one's a little distracting or I'd you know just right. try different portions of the floor. So you yeah. have textures upon textures exactly. upon textures and yes. the final product is the yeah. woven texture as well. Yes, so, so yeah there are very many, many layers of textures, yeah. Yeah and colors as well, they're yeah. quite, so you looks like you were inspired by the colors of Costa Rica as oh, well. Yeah, reds and pinks and blues and there were birds flying everywhere like parrots, I mean it was just it was amazing, it was oh, really, really great, and very inspiring, yes. I'm sure. So when you are in the Bay Area and you're working in the Bay Area, you are one of the Silicon Valley open studio artists. So tell us a little bit about your experiences as an open studio artist. I am. I have been participating in open studios. This will be my seventh year, and I absolutely love it. It's such a great experience. You know, my first year I didn't know what to expect. I was a little nervous, but after that I was kind of hooked. Um, it's a great way to really get in touch with the community and people who wouldn't necessarily go into an art gallery or who aren't really familiar with fine art, you know, especially people from around the neighborhood would see my signs and things and they'd come and kind of peek in apprehensively and I'd take the opportunity to talk to them about it and they'd get excited that there was an artist in the neighborhood and every year it grew and grew and I got more and more people and then I started doing like demonstrations or having even hands-on things where people can create a little piece of art and take it home with them. Oh, what kind of art can they create? So I did, um, last year I did where they could create lumen prints where it was almost like a photogram. So I had um, the photo paper out and they'd go pick flowers from my garden and put it on the photo paper and the sun would expose it, almost like a sun print. And oh, then nice. they got to take a piece home with them. Oh, very so. nice. Yeah, so. And your art is, you use photography, which is a modern art form, but you try to stretch it to make it look like it's older. Yes. And in the in this world of like easy duplications and mass produced prints and things like that, how would you compare your art and where do you see the future going? Um I I like kind of the older antiquated processes. For myself as an artist, that's what really um, puts me in touch with my artwork. So not using these um, Photoshop or digital photography or other things. Um, I like the darkroom. I like having that relationship with the piece. So um, I don't think 
there's anything wrong with that, there's some beautiful pieces that are created in Photoshop. But I yeah. just like, I think it's connecting with nature and the piece. So um, I do use a lot of historical processes. I think they give like a, a nice warmth to the photographs and kind of slowing down and having people uh, remember these processes. Not everything has to be instant gratification. I love the happy accidents or the things that you wouldn't expect to happen that you can't predict with some of these processes. Right, so that you don't have to plan out in a no. digital format as much more planning and exactitude. Yeah. You don't have as much spontaneity, and that's what I love, the spontaneity of, of oh, well, this kind of looks messed up, but if you do something a little different, oh, then it's perfect. You know, you not, I don't know if you should always plan art. So. Right, exactly. That's how I look at art as well. And there's always some place in the middle where you go, mm, is this going to work? And yes. you have to like keep going through that process exactly. to come to your finished piece. Yeah, lots of experimentation, but I also love that too. It's trial and error. Something yes. may work, something may not work, but exactly. that's part of the fun of the being an artist. Right. You know? Yes, but when you're working with film, you sort of have to commit as well yes. because yeah. you know you can't print as many as you could with a digital. Yes, print. yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so, but it's I still it's I still like it. You know, it's still. Oh yeah, it's I enjoy the process that you talk about, and so your inspirations, you know, why insects? I mean, I think I love looking at insects, but there are some people who are just like, oh no. Oh yes, there are <laughs> many people, and it's I think it's my mission to show people, to have them appreciate insects. And just, they're so fascinating. Um, something like the cicada, the picture I have of the cicada. The cicadas have a drum in their abdomen, and that is one of the only insects that can produce the, they produce the loudest sound for just this little drum that they have. And that's part of their mating. Or the life cycle of the luna moth, who its only purpose in life is to mate. It doesn't even have a mouth, it can't eat. So things like that are just, to me, it's just um, nature. It's so fascinating and beautiful. And even walking sticks where people go, oh, it's kind of gross looking. Well, that's, it's camouflage to survive, you know. Right. So I kind of want people to take another look at insects and maybe not fear them as much or think they're gross or anything. Um, there can be some scary ones, of course. Yes. But um, <laughs> in general, they, I think they're beautiful creatures to, you know, to, people should really um, take a second look at and reconsider. Yeah, and the, the way you cut them up and put them on puzzle pieces that people can't really touch the puzzle pieces. It's not yeah. a puzzle to take apart. Yes. But that sort of detaches us a little bit from the insect and <laughs> makes it more of an art piece. So. Exactly, and if they could see, like, I'll have a giant cricket or a locust or something, and if they could actually get up close to the artwork and see that and it, you know and I also during my open studios I bring out my insects for people to see oh, so yes. they could kind of see that too because a lot of people I think their fear of insects um, they only encounter the insects that they you know in their yard and right. stuff so they haven't seen these large ones so if they could see them they, up close they're not as afraid yes yeah, so well that's excellent thank you so much for being on Talk Art with us thank Shannon. you I appreciate it yeah. and thank you for Watching Talk Art, I'm Sally Raines.